Hi everyone, my name is Hayden and today we're going to be learning about the used context hook in React. It's one of the less used hooks um, and it's particularly useful in certain use cases. Often it can be avoided, that's kind of where it differs from the use effect or the use state hook which are kind of the, the bread and butter of React hooks. But I'm going to take some time to explain how it's used and what problem it solves. And where this relates to is essentially how to manage your code state beyond a component. And what I mean by that is that you know how to use the use state hook to manage state within a component. But what happens if you want properties or state to be available outside of a component across different parts of the application? Well, there's basically three ways that you can solve this problem. The first one is kind of the simplest, which is using props um, and passing state down hierarchically, hierarchically um, through components and through components and through components. The second way is using a React.js use context hook, which is kind of like a way of just having global variables essentially in your React app. Uh, it's like the cleanish way of having global variables. The third way is to use a proper scalable state management tool like MobX or Redux. There's a ton more, but they're kind of the two most popular React based um, state management tools. And those things are essentially like fully fledged scalable, very robust, they have a lot of features in them. Um, really cool stuff. That's what a lot of like, you know, proper corporates would be using. They're quite uh, involved though, and they're something that we don't feel is critical to the learning outcomes of this course. So MobX, Redux, those other state management tools are beyond the scope of the course. Passing things down by props gets you a lot of the way, but sometimes you do want things in a global variable state with this kind of like you know, semi, the semi workable method. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at passing props down through components. And then we're going to show you how you would do that um, with the use context hook. So when you're passing props down through components, you're essentially saying, well, I've got state in component one, and I'm going to be giving it to both component two and component three. Now I have a small example of this for you. So I have here a simple, um, let me just enter this down so you can see it. I have a very simple React app here um, and most of it is well summarized in this particular component. And what this component does is that it's a main page component. It stores a page number state with a set page number. It's got a button that essentially on its click all it does is toggle that between 0 and 1. If you increase it, you know, if I, I set it to the current value plus 1 mod 2 which is just like a way of going 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, because it'll keep overflowing back. Um, and that button just says change page. And depending on the state of page number, whether it's 0 or not 0, i.e. 0, 1, it will render the page 1 or page 2 component. Now, this page 1 and page 2 component are just two simple components in different files with a div that says page 1 and page 2. So really simple. You know, I click that, you know, page 1 and page 2. Now, what happens if I want to create another button here um, that is essentially, it keeps track of a, um, like a counter, right? So I'll say up, I'll, you know, I have like an up, uh, button. And what that up button is going to do is basically every time I'm going to click it, it's going to increase a counter by a certain number. So I'll create a new counter state, right? I'll say counter set counter equals react dot use state zero and instead of zero it's going to say counter and every time I click it um, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to call set counter with counter plus one right fairly standard example you've seen these before L let me put a br there so you know we have a bit more um, space on the page like this so up 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 it increases it right now what happens if you want to um, give that information to page one and page two oops we don't need this down here I don't know why that's there what happens if I want to give that to page one and page two? Well, what I would do in this case is I would pass it through as a prop. I would say counter equals counter like this. Bam. And then in my page one and page two, I could access that through props. I could say, you know, page one um, props dot counter like that. And I could do the exact same thing for page two like this props dot counter and I'll capture props. So now you can see whether I change to page one or page two, both of those components can access that state, but that's because it's being passed down through props. 
The other way to solve this problem is to use the use context hook. Now I think the use context hook is a very strange hook that isn't super intuitive, at least at the time of this recording. So what I've done is I've gone and prepared a demo that you can essentially copy and paste from the code here. You can just go look up the code, um, which shows you how we would use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unwind the code I've done here like this. And I'm going to go back to main page and I'm not going to pass that counter in. But what I would really like to do is have this counter accessible across the entire application. So what I've got in my main app.jsx, right, this is my absolute like most out of file, is I've got a whole bunch of code that again you can go and copy. Now you notice before I uncommented this code, all app.js did, which is my highest root component, was it just return main page, it was kind of pointless. Now what I'm going to have it do is wrap the main page in what we call a context provider. Essentially anything inside of this context provider can consume these, this context. And when you think of context, think of it like global variables, right? So every time I say context, think global variables. It's just an easy way of getting your head around it quickly. And what you can see here is that how this is working is that my main component at the very top of my app is actually just creating these two use state variables called var1 and var2. So this isn't anything to do with use context here. This is just me making two state variables. And if I wanted to use these everywhere, which I do, I could just pass them down through main page and then main page could pass them down to every other component. But you know from programming that requiring like global variables to be passed through every function layer can really add a lot of bloat and confusion to your code. So we're gonna use this approach instead, which is that what I'm doing is this context provider that I wrap the page in, I am giving it a value which is a simple object that contains my getters and my setters. What I'm really doing here essentially is making my use state variables accessible across the entire application. Um, how this is working then is that um, I also have a separate context file here, which is, again, this is just a little bit of boilerplate. It's a little bit weird, but essentially what this context file does is it sets the initial values of my context items and it creates a context like a little set of global variables um, and it returns that back to my app.js now again you can do this a bunch of different ways this is just one particular example that i'm giving you now again you don't have to understand it fully because it's not core to the course that's kind of why we're skipping over this because whether you can do this or not we think you understand enough about front-end web development because you could just use local storage for this right that would just be a bit messier um, and it would live beyond the the lifetime I guess of the the page load but this is just me storing two particular variables so what I do now is if on my sub pages say my main page here I would like to access those variables like var1 and var2 Right, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll keep this counter here for a second. Let's say I wanna print out var1. What I can actually do is I can say const getters setters. Note, note the use of braces, not the use of the, the side brackets, equals, um, oh, what is it? It's uh, use context context. Now again, some of you I'm sure have a different way you go about this and that's totally fine. Um, use context context from um, context. So you can see var1 there is, um, it's an empty string to start, right? So if I just write getters.var1 like this, um, you can see it's an empty string. Now what you'll notice here is that look at the similarities between my use context and my use state lines. Notice how they both have a very similar kind of behavior in terms of it's like const two things equals a hook and then something. Now this line's a little bit different, but essentially what happens is if I include this in any component, this getters setters equals use context context, I can then access all of the getters and all of the setters inside of my context. And all of that's defined in my app.jsx. Again, you can just copy and paste this code. So let's say I come along and I say, you know what, I want this counter to be global. I want it to just be a global variable. This is how I would modify the code. I would grab this, I would go, counter set counter like this I would add my counter to my getters I would add my set counter to my setters and I would change um, its initial value to be initial value dot counter which is defined inside of the context file here so I would then say yep my counters default value is zero that's all I need to modify in that file and now I'm good to go 
now that information should be accessible on all of my pages. So here I should be able to say getters.counter, which should hopefully give me zero. I can see that it's not. Oh, there it is. I just have to refresh the page. Because I had added, I would modified... Um, no, I don't know why I had to refresh the page there. That's interesting. Um, so I've got my counter zero there, and now instead of calling set counter, I can actually just call setters dot set counter, getters dot counter plus one, and now when I click that button, it increases it. Now the reason this is exciting is because I can now go and copy that and paste this into my um, my other component files. I have to sorry, I have to include the import. I can go and paste that into my other component files, and here I can just say page one getters dot counter like this and now that works so I could go and do this in my page 2 as well copy this line getters dot counter and then like bam now but all of my like you can see here how I'm not having to pass anything through props it's all just being like shared through this global variable now the boilerplate that you have to deal with is you have to import some context and then you have to use the context hook. They're the two lines of boilerplate you have to do to access your global variables. That's assuming you don't add any more. But if you'd like to add some more, you're going to have to modify your main like kind of top level component and you're going to have to add a small value to um, your context file. Again, if you have a better way of doing this, please go ahead. This is not meant to be a teaching thing. This is actually just meant to be a helpful tip so that you can kind of go and explore other learning outcomes in the course. But please feel free to use this as much as you want. Um, wherever, the code is horse, wherever the code is hosted in the course right now is where you can find this. It'll be under the React, React Hooks context or whatever's, whatever's listed on the, the, the learning side as well. You can also take the time to check out how um, the course website does it. You can go look at the source code online if you want to. It's all sitting here. This example was taken from that. So if you want to go see this used in more detail, please feel free to check that out. Um, and otherwise, thank you. So hope that helps.